So there were recently changes in an open source library called OpenSSL, uh, which has actually caused issues for tools like BTC Recover and a number of other open source tools. With folk now getting obscure errors like this one, essentially all boiling down to the fact that OpenSSL has changed the way that it supports RipeMD160. I pushed some updates to fix this earlier on this month, so rather than giving you this message, it will at least work and uh, throw you a warning telling you about this change. But the thing you'll notice is when we compare this new modified version to uh, this older system that didn't need the fix, uh, we can see that we're only getting about a third of the performance. And that is not something anyone wants when you're doing a seed recovery. Fortunately, the functionality is actually still there in OpenSSL, and it's just a case of knowing how to turn it back on. So basically what I'll be doing in this video is just running through how to uh, update the settings for OpenSSL so that RipeMD160 is available to uh, tools like Python and uh, by extension BTC Recover. This process will be using Ubuntu, but I'll also be uh, showing you how to do it in such a way that it should work for any uh, Linux or Mac platform. It's quite straightforward, so let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So let's jump into the command line. Uh, so what we're going to do is, firstly, if you've got BTC Recover on the system, I did just write a small script uh, that can be used to check whether RipeMD160 is available via Hashlib. And you can just type in Python3 uh, check underscore and it's called uh, ripemd160.py and if you hit enter it will actually tell you and again on this system uh, it just tells us you know bad news ripemd160 is not available via hashlib so sad face so what we're going to do is we're going to need to edit some open ssl configuration files so the first thing you're going to want to do is just type in open ssl info and we want to know where the configuration directory is so we'll just say config dir and we can see here that that is the folder. This should pretty much always be the same on Ubuntu systems, uh, but if you're running some other distribution or if you've done something exotic on your setup, uh, you will want to use this command just to double check where the config folder and config file we want to edit actually is. So we'll just copy that and then we'll navigate to that folder. So CD space and I'll just paste that one I copied from just there, hit enter. And now that we're in that folder, if I type in ls, uh, I can actually see there's a few files in there, and the one that I want to edit is this one here, openssl.cnf. So uh, we'll just use nano, because nano is easy to use, and say sudo. So we're going to have to run this as a, a super user, because this is sort of a system file. And we'll say nano, and then we'll paste openssl.cnf and hit enter. It's going to prompt you for your system password. Um, this is just a test system I've got, so something basic on there and then we're in. So this is the OpenSSL configuration file and what we're going to do is we want to scroll down till we get to... we're going to scroll down a bit until we get to this bit here where it has provider sect which is the list of providers to load. Basically, for those who are interested, uh, the RipeMD160 is now considered a legacy sort of hash function, so that's why we need to enable the legacy uh, provider in OpenSSL before uh, other tools like uh, Python can have access to it. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll just add another line after this default one here, and we'll also just say legacy equals leg legacy underscore sect, and then we're going to scroll down a bit to where it says default sect. So we want to actually make sure we're still activating the default libraries as well. So we need to uncomment uh, this line here. So remove the first two characters that were on activate equals one for default sect. And then we're going to create a new section for legacy. So legacy sect, close brackets, and we'll say activate equals one. And basically, that's it, we can just put a new line there. So I'm just gonna say control X, which is what I wanna to do to exit. And then it will say save modified buffer. I say yes, uh, we wanna just use the same file name. So just hit enter and there we go. So now if I actually just go back to my BTC recover folder, And if I type in the um, 
Python 3 check RIPEMD 160, we can see good news. Um, RIPEMD 160 is available and working in Hashlib, so it can be used with BTC Recover. And now, if we go back and run the commands that we ran at the very start, which is just um, BTC Recover with a performance sort of wallet, And we can see that the performance that we are getting in Ubuntu 22 is now basically identical to the performance that we were getting before in uh, Ubuntu 20.04 with OpenSSL version 1. So there you go, problem fixed. And uh, the good news on this is this will not only fix BTC Recover, but also uh, make RIPEMD160 available to anything else that you might happen to be running on your system that needs it. If you want to know more about it, your best bet is to look at uh, this GitHub issue here on the OpenSSL uh, GitHub repository. And basically, there's just some discussion about uh, what's going on, as well as you get a list of other projects uh, where people have been having this issue, as well as the same sort of documentation uh, that I've just run through here. If you're someone who doesn't use BTC Recover but is watching this video because some other software you use was affected by this, uh, you know, the question of whether it will actually be fixed uh, in the software you're running, they might move to a pure Python implementation or not, uh, will really come down to the developers and will come down to what sort of performance they need. For a lot of applications where you're only doing these hashes uh, occasionally for sort of a wallet or transactions or things like that, it might not matter very much, but for tools like BTC Recover where you're trying to hash, you know, tens of thousands uh, of these addresses every second, this performance difference matters a lot. So that pretty much covers it. Uh, this is something that will just become a standard part of the setup for BTC Recover in the future, particularly as uh, newer versions of both Ubuntu and other distributions become more common. But fortunately, it's quite a straightforward fix. Once you've done the fix on your system, you're pretty much good to go. If you have any specific questions about this, definitely just leave a reply in the comments. I do my best to answer them all. And if you're totally, totally stuck, either getting BTC Recover installed or trying to work out uh, how to use it, for your specific recovery, you can jump onto my website, request some private support, uh, or even something like a trusted recovery, depending on where you're at. So anyway, stay safe and best of luck. Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.